Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Profit Roadmap. We're your hosts, Ryan and Becca. This is the premier podcast created for field service pros to help you grow your business, stay on top of the latest trends, and help provide even more value to the communities that you serve. Uh, today, we're excited to welcome Naylor. For those of you that don't yet know Naylor, he's been thriving in lawn care business, uh, clean cut lawn care services. Uh, you might have heard of his successful YouTube channel, Lawn Care Rookie. And he's also the host of popular podcast, LCR Media, which is dedicated to helping lawn care services grow. Uh, Naylor, uh, will you share with us a little bit how to grow your business via social media and uh, tell us a little bit about your story? Yeah, sure. Well, well, thank you for having me on and thank you for really pronouncing my name on point because it's uh, it's been one of those things that's always mispronounced <laughs> and I just get used to it. So I don't even bother correcting people, but I'll be but I'll be 100% honest. I skipped over your last name. I was going to ask, how's your last name pronounced? Yeah, that's let's, perfectly let's get fine. That, let's get that out there. How, yeah. uh, how do you pronounce your last name? It's Taliaferro. Nice. Naylor Taliaferro. Okay. Yeah, it's a mouthful. But ta so Taliaferro. Taliaferro. Yeah, it's an Taliaferro. awesome last name, though. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I would have butchered it. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. It's all good. I mean, it's, it's not even really... Most people just, you know, say lawn care rookie or rookie or LCR or just my first name. My last name rarely comes into play unless they're really trying to be <laughs> official because <laughs> oh, it's man. probably, you know, a mouthful. So, yeah. Um, For sure, man. Yeah. But, uh, but, yeah. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, how'd you get started in lawn care? Yeah. Well, so, I mean, the, the short story of it all, because it's, you know, this is a, a lifetime in, in the making, but mm -hmm. I've been in lawn care going on our full-time going on nine years now, 10 years total, because I did one year part-time before that while I was working in retail management. So I worked in retail management for 15, a little over 15 years, um, several different companies, like large, you know, big box stores type retailers. And the last one that I was at, I kind of somehow or another stumbled into the opportunity of getting into lawn care. Well, I was always the homeowner that loved lawns. I got my green thumb just from trying to figure it out my own, my own yard and everything, just all the trial and error. I mean, and you know, so that was prior to 10 years ago. It was probably 20 years ago when I was a first time <laughs> homeowner. So 20 years ago, there was no YouTube content creators. There was no lawn care rookie. There was no all the content, you know, insert your favorite content creator out there now and, and to come or that has been and moved on other things. None of those people were doing any of that. I mean, there was YouTube, but it, I don't even know what, what it was at that point. It was just random videos or someone posts a video and like never go back on it, you know, so if you comment, they're not going to respond. So it was a totally different vibe and there wasn't a whole lot of internet, um, anything, you know, there's Facebook, but it was in its infancy and all that, and, you know, there's gopher software, like crazy old school stuff that most people don't even know what the heck I'm talking about. So <laughs> I was just the homeowner, just figuring it out, going to Lowe's and Home Depot and all the big box stores and the little box stores and finding little tools and gizmos and books on stuff on how to, you know, different types of seed and all that stuff that now you can easily just Google, right? And just have endless amounts of information, which again, Google was a thing 20 years ago, but it wasn't what it is now. <laughs> it wasn't, you know? right? Yeah. It's, it's a wildly different ball game. Yes, information. It's totally shifted. So, I mean, I was just the homeowner that figured it out the, the old fashioned way and really got kind of obsessed with, with lawns. And the whole time I was in retail management and, you know, my life was going one way and retail was going another way. Amazon was taking over the world and, you know, like slowly but surely and e commerce and everything and, and all the big box stores are trying to keep up and people, you know, it, it was just, it became a very stressful environment in the brick and mortar stores as, as we called it. And, and it always went down on the management and then always trickled down to your staff and, so it got really stressful working all the time. Thanksgiving, Black Friday became like Black Thursday and you're working like, you know, before I left it, you know, nine years ago, we had to work at like we opened at like 8 p.m. or 6 p.m. or something ridiculous on Thanksgiving. And I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, this is this is terrible. So it was just a terrible trend. And my life was just not happy. Quality of life was awful. I, I you know, I just really needed to press the hard reset button. So I just kind of uh, fell into or leaned into lawn care because that's something that I really enjoyed. I kind of toyed around with the idea of starting my own business years prior to that because I just really enjoyed it. But again, 20 years ago, there weren't guys there. There was no chuck in the truck. There was no mm -hmm. lawn mowing companies. There was no fertilization companies other than like maybe a true green or something like that in, in its infancy. There was just big landscape companies. And, and mm -hmm. if, if you wanted someone to do something, you, they had to do everything. And it was just kind of crazy because it was a totally different dynamic now back then 20 years ago seems like a long time but not a long time 
it was frowned down upon if you had a landscape company. Ooh, you've got a landscape company taking care of your property. You know, they do everything. Mow your lawn, <laughs> trim your bushes, you know, fertilize, mulch, like anything and everything. You had to have the whole thing. And, and and now it's like, why don't you have someone taking care of your, your property, you know, or mowing your lawn, you know, but there was no, there was no specialization back then. So it was very intimidating to me to think about having to have this big landscape company that I knew nothing about. Yes, I knew about managing businesses, but not to that extent. I knew someone in my area that had a landscape company and he had his house up on a big hill, all the property with all the different, you know, um, bulk like rocks and stones and dirt and mulch and all that kind of stuff and it was just it, it was very intimidating i'm like I, I don't know nothing about that massive trucks and trailers and all that so i did toy around with the idea initially but i wasn't really you know i didn't really pursue it but my wife knew knew that that i kind of thought about it and all that so fast forward to 10 years ago which was 10 years later from that a lot had changed and there was a lot of um you know, landscape or lawn care, like lawn mowing only companies, um, guys in a truck and a trailer with maybe one or two people with them. And it just really started specializing and, and, and niching out. So that's where the opportunity became more of like a possibility. And my wife was the one who saw something on Facebook in our neighborhood. Somebody was trying to, uh, they were looking for, for someone to mow their lawn. And I was just, you know, she, she recommended me and she asked me if she wanted to recommend me, if I, if I wanted to give my information, I said, sure, you know, why not? Not really thinking too much of it, but I knew that I was in a bad place in retail and I wanted to change my life, you know, press the hard reset button, like I said, and that's really what started the whole catalyst there. I still had my old 21 inch push mower and hand trimmer and blower from the homeowner days. Cause we had moved, we had moved to Virginia from, from New York state down to Virginia at that point. And, uh, we had already been there for here for a few years, but I'd kept my stuff, even though we were in a townhouse, cause we were looking for a place to actually live in a house. We were just renting. So I held on to that stuff. My wife knew it. She knew that I liked it. She recommended me on Facebook and the rest is history. Like, you know, I mowed like five or six lawns part-time for a year while, um, working in retail management for like, you know, five, six days a week, 60 plus hours, just ridiculous. I'd, you know, pack up my stuff in the back of my Jeep compass with a change of clothes, change in my office, sneak <laughs> right. out the back, you know, Ooh. you hop in my, in my Jeep and try and yeah. bang out a yard or two before it got dark, you know, after like a 12 hour day or something epic on my one day off, get the rest of them, you know, done. And, but, but I was living my best life though. When I was like, when I was out there on the lawn, even though I was exhausted from the day or on my day off and I got up and went and mowed like four or five yards, took me all day with a 21 inch mower for like 10,000 square foot yards. <laughs> I was like, Woo! but like, I was like, man, I could really make something out of this. If I like went full time and went all yeah. in and got better equipment I was really feeling like it was, it was very therapeutic for me and I, I, I was really feeling it. So I just, I quit retail that winter and went full time into, uh, into lawn care that, that coming spring, which is 2014, spring of 2014. And you fast forward to now and, you know, it's 10 years later, technically went from part time, but nine years full time. And, uh, I haven't, you know, looked back since and I've grown to, uh, I've had employees for probably six, seven years now, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't gotten to the second crew yet. That, that was always part of the plan. Like I had a whole plan structured out in five year increments, you know, mm -hmm. first five years, build everything behind the scenes, work on route density, work on, well, first it's like, which is probably answering a lot of your upcoming questions, but this is how, yeah, this you're is how my brain, yeah. this is how I'm my great, brain great. works. Yeah. <laughs> this is how my brain works. But you know, it's like, first it's like, I got to figure out what I want to do. What do I need to do? What, what kind of equipment do I need for that? Who mm -hmm. are the people that, you know, are, are going to fit those needs and where are they? And, you know, and then just build on that. And that's where the route density came from. I quickly was like, I can't drive all over Richmond because I can only get so much done. And the whole goal of me leaving retail was to get my time back or try to, and, and try and re regain my life. So by working from sun up to sun down, that's all great, but you know, there's gotta be a means to an end there because, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I, I was adamant not to work on weekends cause I was working all the time in retail. So I didn't want to work on weekends that if I didn't, if I didn't have to, that I, I was trickling into a lot, of, a lot of weekends cause I couldn't get everything done during the week. And then I'm like, well, it's because I'm spreading myself too thin. I'm driving all over the place, doing anything and everything. Let me focus in on what I actually want to do. I love lawns. I love turf. Let me just focus on that. Let me work to get my fertilization, you know, license, 
you know, I know how to mow lawns. That's all good. I, you know, I got commercial equipment right off the bat, borrowed some money from a family member, paid, paid them back the following year and had, you know, some good stuff. So I was able to take on anything and everything, but really just refined all that onto, you know, just total turf care, mowing, fertilization, weed control, aeration and seeding, you know, trim some shrubs throughout the year if people want that freshen up their mulch, you know, in the spring every year, if they want that, some of those basics, but no real landscaping, no hardscaping, anything like that. Um, just really focused on the turf care. And I just grew that and then focused on certain neighborhoods that were all close together. The, the HOA cookie cutter neighborhoods, the homeowner associations where there's 700 to a thousand houses in each, you know, of those HOAs. So you could just spend a whole day in there if you wanted to. And, 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 and then that's where I really excelled and grew all of my route density and just focused on that. Um, and, and like I said, that was all five year plans. So the first five years was to figure that out and get to the point where I can hire employees and, you know, like, OK, how am I going to pay them all this kind of stuff and, and then build that out for five, another five years, get to a second crew and just keep doing that. Rinse and repeat. My goal has always just been to be two or three crews. Um, of lawn maintenance, you know, there might be a truck or two for some other stuff like fertilization, weed control, which is mainly me at this point. But, um, but with everything going on through the pandemic, that got a little crazy with trying to find people and keep people. So uh, that kind of was a lot of ebb and flow. So I've just kind of been stuck at one crew for the last few years, just trying to hold strong with that, really getting rid of the, you know, dissolving the bottom um, clients, you know, bottom 20% and all that and trying to keep keep everything strong, keep the loyal clients, keep refining my business, implementing credit cards on file, implementing, you know, 12 month contracts, you know, raising my, my prices, you know, regularly every year for all these different, you know, all, all these things that I've learned over the years from trial and error and, and listened to from social media, from my peers and mentors, I've been implementing in my business year after year as well. Um, you know, just to keep my, keep, keep being as profitable and as efficient as possible. So that's kind of where my whole lawn care journey started and, and is at this point. That's awesome, man. Uh, along the way, you also, I mean, you built a pretty, uh, pretty impressive social media presence as well. Thank uh, you. Yeah. With you on YouTube and everything. You've got your podcast. I mean, plug, plug that stuff, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, that that kind of came through um, right around the same time because year one, and and this is this is you know kind of like my bread and butter and where my passion is 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 connecting and networking and community. I just year one of starting my business just inadvertently by doing research on Google, as you know, t uh, nine years ago, Google was a lot better and there was a lot more information out there. And there was people on YouTube creating regular content that are still to this day. Some, some aren't, some are, and they're good friends of mine. And, but at that time I didn't know who they were or anything. I just Googled certain things. Like I was just trying to learn how to be, go from a homeowner to a professional, you know, uh, professional contractor and I'm just trying to Google stuff like how to price this, how to price that. Someone messaged me on Facebook. Do you, can you prune, uh, can you give me a quote on pruning crepe myrtles? I'm like, I don't even know what that is. So I'm Googling what's a crepe myrtle. <laughs> how do you prune crepe myrtles? You know, how right. do you price, you know, hedge trimming and all, all this stuff. So there'd be all kinds of YouTube videos that would come up, right? Cause Google and YouTube, you know, Google owns yeah. YouTube. So they're all connected. So not only do you have the Google, posts, but then if there's videos, images, you, you know, it's going to recommend it. So I was started stumbling upon some of these regular content creators on YouTube. And I was like, wow, this is cool. And then I see the same kind of people commenting. And I'm like, this is like, because before that, like I said earlier, people would just post stuff on YouTube and you'd like never hear from them again. But these guys were posting regularly, like every week or every couple of days or every day. And I'm like, this is kind of cool. This looks like a, like a, like a fun community to be a part of and that they're all lawn care and landscape professionals like me like this is awesome so i just started following along within that first year you know like got a youtube channel or i got a youtube account so i could like and follow and subscribe and all that stuff and comment and just kind of be a part of the community from behind the scenes while i was trying to you know get run my business for the first year um, and i was learning a lot from them as well because they were going through different so some of them had been in the business for 20 years some of them were only a couple of years ahead of me. So they, I was still learning some of their things that they learned. And, but then there was still stuff that I was learning or needed to learn that nobody was talking about. Cause they were either so far beyond that. They kind of forgot about that, or they were just a couple of years ahead and everyone's always kind of thinking about where they're at. So nobody was talking about where I was at. So I was like, well, you know what? I don't want to be behind the scenes anymore. I want to start creating my own content too. I think that's kind of fun. Cool. 
you know, fun fact, I went to school for art. I majored in fine arts in college. So I'm a very creative minded person. So I kind of think that's what attracted me to like, wow, making YouTube videos. It seems pretty, I never really would have thought of it if it wasn't for some of these guys early on um, that, that were creating content regularly and they were just doing it on their phone or they had like a very inexpensive camera from Walmart or something. They didn't have like the big old expensive vlogging camera like Casey Neistat and all these folks. <laughs> you know, of course we all kind of evolved to that eventually, yeah, but just right, starting right. out, we were just using our cameras, you know, then eventually we got a GoPro and we felt like we were like all big shots and stuff. And <laughs> you know, we, we, we all progressed, but it seemed attainable that I could just use my cell phone and just record some stuff of my setup without even meeting me in it initially. And you know, you kind of work your way up to stuff. and. And uh, we all supported each other. And so I kind of converted everything from a YouTube account to an actual YouTube channel and started posting regular content, called it Yelp Lawn Care Rookie. So people clearly knew it was about lawn care. Hopefully it would come up in the searches because lawn care was in it. But I wanted it to be rookie because I was brand new and I didn't want people to think that I was like the other guys with experience giving experience <laughs> advice. I was just telling you how hey, it is. I'm a rookie, just so you yeah. know, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm a rookie. I'm going to share what, what I've learned, what I've stumbled upon, you know, what oh, works, beautiful. what doesn't work, my mm. failures, my successes, all that stuff. So that was kind of the whole premise. And it's really grown over the years into more of like me becoming um, one of the founding fo fa founding members of growing the community, fostering growth in our community, and just continuing to pioneer that with all kinds of events and different ways of creating content, like uh, podcasting was is the newest thing that I've done. But and then continuing with YouTube and Instagram and, you know, Facebook here and there. Uh, I mean, I'm on everything really, but, yeah. you know, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, all that stuff. But the most common things that I'm always, that everyone always stays on, Instagram stays relevant all the time. Um, Facebook stays relevant and obviously YouTube is, is, is the Mac daddy of them all. So I just stay focused great. on all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's and that's kind of where, where, where we've gotten to. I just keep trying to figure out ways to grow the community and, and connect people. Yeah. I like, what I like about that is I, I frequently as a trainer speak to a lot of businesses just starting out and I'll get those questions like, how do I learn about route density or pricing this, or how do I price that and market research? So like having Google, like I know, when I was younger, I'm still young, but there wasn't like, there's free education online now. Like you had to like look in books back in the day. So you can Google and you'd literally go to school on YouTube. So like resources, like what you provide. And I know we have our field services Academy. It's great. Um, but along with social media and technology, it can be very overwhelming if you're running a business and that's already a full-time job. Social media can be a full-time job itself. Um, so what would be, we kind of spoke about this earlier, like what are like techniques people can use to use it more effectively, efficiently with the little amount of time they may have. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not easy for sure. I mean, some, some other content creators will joke about, see these bags under my eyes, you know, like, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's real deal stuff, you know, but I, I, at the end of the day, cause I mean, like I, I did all that, you know, I stayed up till like one, two in the morning editing a YouTube video so they could go out the next, the next day. I would literally be standing in my office or on my kitchen counter so they wouldn't fall asleep because if I sat down, I would just be so tired. I'd start drifting off and I'd you know, lose my place for editing and I'm like really determined <laughs> to finish the video. I mean, I, I've, I've been through it, man, because you know this is before any brand even cared about anything. They thought we were a joke. Like the early days, 20, 2015 was my first year at any trade show and it was at, a, at GIE at the time called GIE Plus Expo and now called Equip, but my first year there, which was the second year for a lot of, of, of the folks that I first started watching on YouTube, but my first, my first year of 2015, that people like were putting cameras, trying to record stuff, and they're like, get that out of my face, get that out of our booth, like we're spies or something. And it was really frustrating. We were like the weirdos <clears throat> trying to like, you know, vlog and, and, and make, make all this content and then staying up late to, to edit it and put it out just, just for, for the love of the game, you know, like it was, it was just, we just enjoyed connecting with each other. It was a great hobby. It was fun. It kind of, a lot of us, not necessarily me, cause I was still so new, but a lot of the old, older folks that had been doing it for a while, it kind of re-energized them in the industry. Cause you know, sometimes you get burned out, just mowing lawns all day, every day for 10, 15, 20 years, or, you know, whatever other stuff you, they might be doing along with that. And then when you all of a sudden add like, hey, now I'm vlogging my day or I'm doing equipment reviews and I'm connecting with other guys that are 
not just in my area, but all across the country and sometimes the world, it really sparks a new energy. And then you go to a live event, it's a whole another level of energy and all that. So, you know, we were doing it for that. Right. And then, and now, now, you know, you fast forward, you know, eight, seven, eight years from then, and people are paying us to go to a, to their booth to record a video or, or do a product review or something. It's to- totally yeah. different, complete 180. But, you know, it, it, so uh, <laughs> we were doing it for the love of the game. You know, now we're still doing it for the love of the game, but there's a little more incentives with it. But now well, I think we've learned a lot the hard way. And and I, I think it really comes down to you as a person, you know, like, are you a very operationally structured person where you can like block your time you know prioritize or are you a fly by the seat of the pants wing it stay up late do whatever it takes whenever it takes do you have a family are you single like all these things are variables you know as to how your day needs to be structured and prioritized but at the end of the day when you're creating content for your business it's a lot easier like if you have a legitimate business that you are out there cutting grass or doing landscaping or hardscaping every day or if you're the owner Uh, I mean, I'm sure a lot of us listening or all of us are owners, but if you're like, if you have a crew and you're out out of the truck, meaning owner, where you're working more on the business than in the business and and you're not necessarily there day to day, you can still go and get the content that you need to promote your business, whether you're just doing it for fun, peer to peer, or you're doing, you know, for customer business to customer um, and you're just trying to promote your business, you can still do it while you're there. Like I say, whether you're the one actually doing the work or you're going to check on your guys, you can record, take pictures before and after. And it takes a little bit of training, a little bit of conditioning for you, because so many times I would take the after pictures and forget about the before. Or like I would think about taking the after. I'm like, oh, man, I forgot to take the before, (laughs) you know, or vice versa. You know, like you got to do both, you know, so, you know, you kind of condition yourself. Uh, by by default when you're a content creator and you're regularly creating content as kind of a hobby ak slash job in some cases um or another business career whatever um, it becomes more routine but for Mm -hmm. those that are just starting out or they solely just want to do it for their business um that's what you have to do you have to you have to be intentional you have to plan it out just like when you're planning your uh, uh, schedule for the day okay these are the jobs that i'm doing okay i want to take before and after you know make notes on a piece of paper in your phone, your, your CRM, whatever, you know, insert wherever you're putting, you're keeping track of this stuff. So you know what you're doing when your calendar app, whatever, um, we've all been there, right? So you start somewhere and just make notes. Like I want to do, I want to take pictures of this, you know, I want to, I want to take a video about, I want to talk about that. This problem happened, this solution. Again, that's something that maybe you can put on a web on your website for customers to see like, oh, wow, they're really responsive. Or, oh, look at this tip that they provided or, oh, look at these before and afters. And uh, that that's just a good way to promote your business because, I mean, otherwise no one's going to know who mm-hmm. the heck you are and what you provide right. un- unless they're like neighbors, you know, they're, dr- yeah. or they're driving down the street or they're whatever. Um, but that you got to take those photos, those videos. I did that from day one before I was like a content creator, you know, like before I even really – before I create a YouTube channel, my wife was adamant. She was like, hey, you need to, because I wasn't even on Facebook. My wife was on Facebook since day one, just like all the other housewives, right? Playing Farmville and all that. Shout, shout out to the, to the OGs of Facebook. That is old school. That but, is real um, old school. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so she knew all yes. about it, though. And she was like, you need to create a business page on Facebook. Yeah. I'll help you. I'm like, okay, cool. I don't know what you're talking about. But so, so from day one, I had it before, you know, I, that, that was the only way to market and advertise my business was a a free business Facebook page. And, you know, you got to fill that up with photos and videos and posts. And I was doing events on there in my, in my, uh, my local neighborhood and advertising it for my personal page, sharing my business page on the Facebook and asking other people to do it in other neighborhoods. And and that's how I grew really quickly um, was through Facebook. Um, But you got to train yourself to take those pictures, you know, and and, and potentially videos. You don't have to be in the video. You don't have to be a bona fide content creator if you're not comfortable with that. You can just, you know, point, you know, or just show, you know, these are these are the we're going to take care of all these bushes. And they're all crazy and overgrown looking like this customer called us. They want us to, you know, they just moved in. They want us to get everything fixed up. We told them we're going to make it have it looking brand new. and, And then you show the after. And, 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 you know, we're all done, took us however much, you know, whatever, whatever you want to, however you want to, you know, script it out. And, and people will just be like, just the before and after people will be blown away. You know, video definitely yeah. is um, photos are one thing, but there's something about video. That's why YouTube is, is, is the, is the king because 
video, there's nothing like it. You know, you can just really see and show a lot more with video mm -hmm. um, than, like, than just photo. I feel like a lot of people get overwhelmed when it comes to video, but like the barrier at entry to that stuff is so low now. Like everyone has a phone in their mm -hmm. pocket that yeah. has a, right. like a pretty good camera on it. Right. Yeah. So that, that's how I started it before yeah, I, I started my YouTube something. channel with just my cell phone. So, I mean, it's yeah. yeah, you just use your cell phone. You can upload it directly to Facebook on the Facebook. You can actually just be in Facebook and click mm -hmm. on video, you know, just upload a post on Facebook and click whatever you want. Video, post, picture. Do you want to upload a picture or take a picture, you know, upload a video or, or record the video? It's it's right there and you can stop and restart if it was, if you mess up the video or you stumbled over your words. It's 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 very easy, though. I know it's intimidating. I, I've been there, done that. Um, but, you know, when when you're starting without you in the on the camera, sometimes it's helpful because you're not like looking at yourself and feeling awkward. Mm -hmm. um, if you are, you know, you can have your sunglasses on in the beginning, but then take them off to connect with people like, you know, there's so many different levels. But day one, level one you know, rookie for life, just pull out your cell phone, go on your Facebook <laughs> app, your business Facebook page. If you don't, you know, hopefully you have one. Um, or if you're just going to upload it to your website or something, just take the picture on your phone or record the video on your phone and then you can upload it to your, your uh, website. Or, or if you have someone doing your website for you, if you're all into that, um, then you can send that information to them and they could take care of it for you. But just I didn't have any of that. I was just bootstrapping from day one and I just <laughs> took a picture and posted on Facebook, you know, just record a somewhere. video, post it on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel that like it. sometimes that's kind of the hardest part is like just clicking the go live button or like the mm -hmm. record button. Like just yeah. click the button and like the, the hump is over. You just now yeah. you just now it's easy. <laughs> you're in, you're in yeah. it. Yeah. It feels I mean, awkward start, at first, but yeah. You know, but it start does get with easier. start with pictures. Start with pictures yeah, start if with you're pictures that intimidated. At least get something up there. You know, exactly. everyone does pictures, you know, but then if you really want to separate yourself, move into, into video, because that's where you can really engage with people for mm -hmm. sure. So for sure. Uh, I think I know the answer because you've alluded to it. Uh, but of the different social media platforms, uh, when it comes to building uh, an online presence with social media, uh, which platforms do you think are the most important? Definitely Facebook. Um, I know a lot of folks that do stuff on Instagram. I've never promoted my business business on Instagram to know firsthand, but I know a lot of folks do mm -hmm. and they're successful with that. It's, I mean, Facebook owns Instagram, so it's, it's your great mm -hmm. next best bet, but you know, Facebook has a Facebook business page and, and so many other things that fit that are Facebook originals that Instagram, uh, in Instagram, Instagram hasn't integrated. <laughs> Let's try yeah. to find the thing. They yeah. haven't integrated that part, you know, so it's, you still you need Facebook for, well, you need both to, to use both, but you know, Facebook has their Facebook business page. And if you do that, it's just, it's like another version of your website. It's just that you don't have full control over it. Facebook does, and you got to boost this and that and blah, 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 um, to get the full value out of it. But it's still a great, it's another great, SEO, another way to get search engine optimization by having a Facebook page. Google My Business is another thing. Um, Google My Business is obviously nothing like Facebook or Instagram, but Google's doing their best at layering things in. I mean, it's been around Google My Business has been around since I started my business and it's come a long way since then. Everything is all integrated now into one app. Like I can just go to Google Maps and then switch over, not switch over, just click on the next tab and there's messages. You know, if people are are Googling lawn care or Googling clean cut lawn care and they see my face, my, uh, any, all, all the things, but if they click on the Google, my business, they can message me or call me or both. And then you get all the analytics every month from, from Google, from your Google, my business page. And I would upload, I would just like make a day, like make scheduled posts, like scheduled in my brain and my calendar, like not where you could do it on the app, but scheduled where I would just sit down mm -hmm. and I would post the same post on Facebook and Google my business. So this way I got them both done. Boom. You know, and every time you do that, you spike the algorithm. You keep popping yourself, right. keeping yourself up to the top organically without, I mean, you can also pay to boost all that stuff, but organically, if you just keep posting new videos, new posts, anything of that sort, getting new reviews, um, on Google, my business and Facebook, then you're good. You're going to stay up at the top, just those two right there. And then of course, you know, if you have a website, but even if you just start out and you don't not really sure you can't afford that or whatever you can do Google my business for free and Facebook for free and then get your business page for free. And then you could just, you know, really start promoting your business that way and, and get yourself, just keep posting, 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 posting and stay up at the top in your area. And that's, 
I have huge SEO. That's in a whole nother topic for, for maybe another day, but that's a whole nother <laughs> thing. I yeah. just have every time people, people either see me in the neighborhood and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, I see your trucks everywhere. And I only have one truck because we're just always in the neighborhoods all week because of the route density. You know, we can't get everything done in one day. We have over 20 yards in every single HOA that we're in. That's that's really a scramble to try and get all that done in one day, especially when it gets to be 100 degrees in August here. So, uh, we, you know, people just see me everywhere, see us everywhere. So there's that. And then whenever they Google because they saw us or they're just looking for lawn care, then they just go online and they see all of the different things. When you Google clean cut lawn care or you Google lawn care in Midlothian or lawn care in Richmond or wherever, you know, name, you know, insert your the town in this area. I'm one of the top ones that come up because I have so many different things to, to keep me at the top for SEO. And I and again, we uh, I think this is off air. We talked. I mentioned this. I, I, I follow the trends. Google my Maybe. business wants you to do certain things. So I did them all, you know, mm -hmm. like get, do this, <laughs> do that. Okay. I'm going to do yeah. it. You know, yeah. um, send, send an email out, you know, mm -hmm. service autopilot's great about having all these different ways that you can communicate with your clients. And, you know, I just got the link for the Google, my business review, got the mm -hmm. link for my Facebook business page review and just email that out to all, you know, click all all your clients exactly. insert insert document that you created with your you know please you know thank you for your you know all your fun stuff thank you for being a client if you're happy with our service we'd love for you to take a minute and do this re review easily click on the link boom and you just get a ton of reviews and then bam yeah. you just spike back up at the top of the seo again so i just i just listen and take action and and it, it, it works and it's all free of course you can pay for all the for more stuff but you can at least start off for free Mm -hmm. Yes. And thank you for plugging our bulk emailing capabilities and automations. You can oh, automate yeah. all that too. And service oh, autopilot, yeah. by the way. <laughs> oh man. Uh, you know I had to slide it in there sooner or later. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so that's yeah. the second oh sorry, go ahead, Brian. <laughs> uh, so I was gonna say like you like you I mean you just spouted off a ton of stuff that people can do, yeah. right? Now, if you're not already in the weeds doing that, and like that, that can feel very overwhelming. Do you feel like it's necessary to have a social media specialist to get started with these things? It's not necessary. Because I'm going to say it, maybe not necessary. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Right. No, no. It, it's not necessary, but it's definitely helpful. And and, and mm -hmm. but I I really think that again, it's back to you know um, how do you find the time to do everything? Like it, it has to be like your personality type and your lifestyle, and you know what do you have time for? Do you have a family? Or don't you do, you know, do you have all the time in the world or don't you, are you a type a personality where you can never stop? Or are you someone like me that has to like take a time out and recharge your batteries and kind of be in a padded room like this, and just kind of, you know, be in silence and, and kind of re regain your composure, you know, like you got to know, are you a gambler? Or are you not like, are you a risk taker? Or are you not like, you got to know yourself and then go from there. But if you're starting from scratch, most people are really like trying to budget as much as possible. And un unless that social media person is their spouse or you know, significant others or someone that's kind of just helping them out, you know, uh, in the interim, like for free or something, it, it, it's, it's really intimidating to, to, to have someone to do that for you unless you desperately need it. Because, you know, some people really are just super antiquated with all that. And they're, they're just really more, um, in the field folks than behind the scenes folks. And they just have, you know, they need, they need a bookkeeper. They need this, they need that. You know, they just really see, they need a CRM obviously to, to keep things organized. Like, you know, those things are hard to swallow financially right out the gate. So you kind of have to build on those. But so I'm, I answer, say all that to answer that I think eventually everyone gets to the point where they, can and need to afford to have someone do different things, bookkeeping, you know, answer phones. Um, that might be all the same person, you know, um, handle certain things at the, have an office and have someone to handle things at the office, including social media stuff like that. A lot of guys in my area that I know and some other folks on social media, as they grow bigger and they get closer and closer to that million dollar mark, if that's their goal and they have, you know, many crews and, um, doing a lot of stuff and they're out of the, the, the trucks and they're working on the vision and, and building the business from the outside. 
they have different people in place, like someone to do social media that might just be one person, you know, or that's someone that's doing multiple duties until they get even bigger and so on. So I think right out the gate, if it, you know, that's, that's something that you as the, as that owner has to figure out if that's something that you desperately need to do, cause you know, it won't get done otherwise. And then maybe you can find a friend or, a, you know, a, a sibling or, you know, whatever, a spouse, all, all the above, there's a lot of people that can help without hiring necessarily a specialist um, right out the gate. But if you can and you know you need to, absolutely that's going to help. But I, I don't think you need to do that. You know, sometimes you might just have to really grind it out and figure it out. Like I would love to have a YouTube editor, but, you know, I'm just grinding <laughs> it out. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I kind of enjoy editing the videos, but it would definitely make it easier for me to get them done more consistently if I had an editor to do it, but that's a whole nother ball game. You know, it's an added an expense and finding the right person that knows, you know, what, what you want and communicates and all that. That's a whole nother thing. So you just kind of make those steps, those plans. What, what, what do you need to do? What want to do and can afford to do? Awesome. Sweet. So, question about the business owners like looking to like grow their business the next level grow their brand and things like that you kind of mentioned like things you do like people notice you out and about like with i'm sure like maybe you have certain shirts or uh wrapping on your truck your vehicle things like that so what are things they can do any like equipment they can get if they're starting out what are like some upgrades they can do or just any things that you would recommend for any business owner at any level yeah i would say branding branding at every level but from day one i no matter whether it was a magnet on the side of my truck you know all the way to having it having everything lettered up and official shirts and all that but for, from day one the winter that i quit retail and was like doing whatever i could to prepare for the spring and, and and hit the ground running which i did with over 30 regular lawns to mow and you know i was just hitting the ground running right out the gate because i did so much research in the two months in the winter time um, where there wasn't much to do and i was just doing kind of miscellaneous things and focusing on getting my name out there but you know i got a business well i, I figured out the name got a logo um, got a business license got business cards um, try to get some shirts, which was not this. It was like a, a different, it was like a yellow shirt with the green logo, but you know, I was trying to stand out. Um, and so it's, that's kind of evolved yellow to then green with a white logo. And now it's the gray with the green logo, which is basically like from here on out, you know, we've been, I've had this for many years now. I just like the, the look, the contrast of dark gray with the, the apple green pop and the logo on the back of the shirts and all that. And, and everybody, you know, but I, from day one by myself, I always had my work shirt that was clean as it could be, you know, I had to, you had to order new ones occasionally. <laughs> right. You know, I yep. mean, we're out there working, of course, so we're going to get yeah. a little bit dirty, but I would have like a, like a, a brand new crispy hat and, uh, and, and a nice clean shirt in the back. So if I was doing quotes, I would throw those on real quick. So I looked halfway more put together, you know, like I was the owner, like I had a polo that I would throw on, you know, and I put my hat on, you know, and I'd go and how you doing? You know, I'm the owner and all that stuff, you know, instead of my grass stained shirt or whatnot, not to say you have to do any of that, but I'm just saying from day one, my mentality was branding image. I want to separate myself from Chuck in the truck. Sorry, Chuck. I know you're a good guy and you have good intentions, but there's, there's a lot of progress that you could make, Chuck. You're leaving a lot of stuff on the table there. You know, we, we want to lift that. Every... Yeah, we want to, we want to, <laughs> we want to lift everybody up. We want to, you know, raise the market value. We right. want to get bigger and better and all that stuff, better image for this industry and all that. So from day one, I was like, man, I, I am not going to be that stereotype that we all know and I won't go into, but you know, I, I want to be above that. I want to be better than that. I want to, <laughs> be the people, the, the person that attracts the higher end clients that right. are going to pay me more and appreciate the value and all that stuff. I'm not going to be dealing with all the crazy yards and the crazy people and all that stuff, though I did in the beginning because I was just trying to do everything. And then I realized that's not that's not the way. And I just built that professional image. But from day one, it's all about branding the shirts the business cards, the, the logos, it, it all matches, you know? And then, then, then when I, when I, uh, advertise over the years, you know, I've got my postcard that looks just, it looks, uh, the post one side of the postcard, it looks just like my trailer white with the big green logo on it. And the other side has all the contact information with a picture of one of the lawns that we take care of different info, contact info, all that. And 
pop them off, but I don't mail them. I cherry pick the neighborhoods and the houses in the neighborhoods that I want to take care of. And we, we, you know, either do a door hanger or, uh, the mailbox underneath, there's a flyer box, a newspaper box underneath the mailbox. That's, that's fair game. That's not illegal. We're not touching the mailbox itself. We're just touching the little, little magazine box underneath. You pop the postcards in there. You typically see a lot of business cards like housekeeping and all the folks in there, tree care, all that stuff, throwing all their cards in there. I've got my nice postcard in there so people can see. So that matches. And, you know, there's, I'm not a marketing expert, you know, anymore. I don't remember all these things, but you know, like there's X amount of touches, you know, that you're supposed to have before people like remember you and resonate with you. So it's right. like, okay, I got the postcard, I got the Facebook posts. I got my trailer roll, rolling through. I got my shirts, got my business cards, you know, all these different things, um, SEO, all the stuff, trying to make sure that I'm out there as much as possible. So people just constantly see clean cut lawn care, clean cut lawn care, clean cut lawn care. Oh, I got this. this in the mail yeah. from clean yeah, cut lawn care. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's, I, seven, is it seven touches? I think so. Right. Seven Something sounds like that. right. Seven feels yeah. right. No yeah, it that. does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, <laughs> also yeah, not it's, a marketing expert. <laughs> right, right. But something along those lines. Yeah. So, so you just got to keep keep it up. So from day one, you know, I, a magnet is pretty inexpensive. You know, some shirts, you know, like online are pretty inexpensive. Now I have a local place that I get all my shirts. Also pretty inexpensive because I get them in bulk and all this stuff, and I've got a good relationship with them. I've been doing it for eight eight years or whatever. But first starting out, it was like you know some random website that I had them, you know, upload my logo and just ship us some shirts for not, <laughs> not the most inexpensive, but you know, it wasn't terrible either. And, you know, if, so you, 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 you figure these things out and, and you work your way up, but you can always start somewhere and then just start with the basics. You can, I even w got the whole like uh, DIY postcard where you go to a office supply store and you get your business oh, yeah. card paper and you stick it in your printer and you print all your business card with the prep rate and you rip all the prep <laughs> and you got your little stack. I mean, I we all got to start that. somewhere, yeah, right? You do. Yeah. You do. Now I got yeah. the fancy business cards, you know, like the nice thick <laughs> card stock and all that double sided. And every now and again, I catch somebody at, you know, I just catch like another fe uh, fellow lawn lawn care landscaper somewhere either at the gas station or at the equipment dealer and we exchange cars and they're like oh this is legit i gotta get a two-sided <laughs> one you know or nice. like hey man look did you you know telling their friend look at this is what i was telling you look at how this his card is like you know but that that evolves over time you know you learn these things by trial and error i see someone else doing it or uh, you know like in person like like at, at you know that interaction or social media all the above so um but anyone can can start anywhere with the simplest thing but branding is key because it will get your name out there people will remember you and, and you will become synonymous so now it's to the point where when people ask for a recommendation on facebook in these neighborhoods so many people recommend me that it's kind of peer pressure for that person compared <laughs> to the one or two other companies that get recommended once or twice and and especially when we pull up to a cul-de-sac and we do all the houses but one right. that poor person just feels really isolated and they just have to jump on the bandwagon and keep up with the joneses you know right. you see them out there with their with their electric push mower and they're like and mm -hmm. we're like and we're done Can't in like 10 minutes, out. you know, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I'm, I'm just like, you know, waving my business card, you know, toss it in the box. Like, Hey, give us a call. And that's happened before. There've been people that yeah. Yeah, I've seen you for years. I think it was time to give you a call and I'm like, Hey, there you go. I mean, that happens regularly actually. So, but it all starts with branding. People watch you and they pay attention how you look. I actually, one last quick story. I had my newest client, my eighth one on a street. Like the mm -hmm. street is epic. We call we've we joked it's like the street of dreams because we just pull up and we're just there for like hours, just knocking them out, bang, bang, bang. And then we skip a house and then bang, bang, bang. The next ones and you know, bored John over here just keeps hacking uh, down his yard every couple of couple of weeks, but for whatever reason doesn't want to call <laughs> us. But the 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 newest one on that oh, street, man. the eighth one, I was like, hey, um, you know, thank you for for calling me, but why can I ask what made you pick us? Because for one, there's a the other um, company that is recommended in that neighborhood mows his na next door two house neighbors yards on the other side. We do a whole a whole rest of the street on that's on one side of his house, and then the other side, the last two on that street are some other company, which they're decent folks. I know the owner and all that. Um, and he was like, honestly, because they scare me. 
they uh <laughs> i'm afraid they're gonna tear my yard apart they're just mm-hmm. flying through that yard ripping through it i'm afraid they're gonna destroy my yard so i just you know i've seen you for years you guys do a really good job you take care of like half the street you know like one whole side of the street you know like and then one on the other side like you, you just knock them out so we figure we give you a call so uh that that's, that's just awesome. all to branding doing a good job making people remember you and then sooner or later they're going to give you a call if they need if they need help with something it's presence mm-hmm. yeah so there you go awesome thank you so much neil for like being a guest on the profit roadmap podcast and like any closing thoughts or if like if people want to find you want to learn more about lcr media on your rookie your youtube where can they find you yeah thank you so uh, i'm like I alluded to earlier, I'm on everything. So if you just Googled lawn care rookie, which is what LCR stands for, or LCR, you're going to find everything, um, which is YouTube, mainly Instagram. Those are, I mean, I'm, I'm on everything, but YouTube and Instagram is I'm regularly posting stuff. I have the podcast, LCR media podcast. So those three things, you can stay connected with me and what I have going on and what's going on in the community. Um, LCR media, I created specifically so that I could keep doing network, creating networking events. Uh, The very first one that I did that Service Autopilot is still a part of to this day, that the rally, um, it was a meetup that was very small in its infancy back in 2014. And I kind of took the leadership role in in 2016, basically, and have grown it since then. It's now it's, you know, 600 folks strong from the community that go down to now the Equip Expo every year, um, Thursday night at 6 p.m. But um, everyone goes and hangs out. They get free free food, um, you know, cash bar, tons of networking opportunities, tons of giveaways from all the different brands that are involved, uh, all kinds of exciting things. A great time to recap the first main day of Equip. And, and that kind of really stemmed a lot of other things. But I created LCR Media so that I could specifically run that event and have all the finances run through there and keep it separated from my lawn care business. And it's just grown from there. I mean, there's all kinds of different av- revenue streams from different social media platforms, as well as all the other networking events that I do. And all that stuff I talk about all the time um, on those things. My, my podcast, LCR Media Podcast, my Instagram at Lawn Care Rookie and LCR Media, and my YouTube channel, Lawn Care Rookie. But again, LCR will bring you to all that stuff. There is a Facebook page that is very um, specific to Equip Expo. It's called Road to Equip. If you go on Facebook and just type in Road to, it's probably going to come up because there's almost 3,000 people on there now nice. just for wow. Equip. That's a That's lot amazing. of people man, that are that obsessed with awesome. Equip. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of people from all over the world, mind you, all over the yeah. world. Wow. Like uh, I, I met I met a good friend of mine from Ireland that I've known since 2014 because of social media. I met him for the first time in 2019 prior to COVID. He had uh, a company that was going international flew him from Ireland. He'd been wanting to come out, but as you know, as you can imagine, it's pretty expensive. A lot of time commitment. They're like yesterday, like their time is way, way out there. So, (laughs) you know, he, he, so they flew him out, (laughs) they flew him out, all expenses paid. He just had to hang out in their booth a couple of times and be the, you know, an influencer for him and, and, and bring, you know, folks to the booth. But so I got to meet him and hang out with him for the first time in person, but he's in the group as, as well as so many other people from all over the world, Canada, everywhere, Australia, Ireland, UK, they're all on there. And of course, the United States strong, um, they, they want to go to equip. They, they did go, they will go, they're going to go. They, they're just living vicariously through us cause they can't go cause they're in another part of the country <laughs> or, or our world, but it's almost 3000 people strong. And if you want to know what's going on for equip, it's all in there. E- even equip themselves many years ago have been a part of it. it it's a, it's amazing. No offense to, to them, but more people are engaged in equip in that group than in Equip's group. So they're like in there answering questions because oh, people will comment, That's awesome, what about this? What about that? Yeah. And then they go on there and they answer the questions, which is amazing. It's exactly what I wanted to create was a one-stop shop to streamline all of the events, all of like, hey, where is this content Central creator going to be? Where is this person going to be? And, you know, blah, 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 blah. And because everyone would be posting stuff on their own social media and it got really confusing. And I just wanted it to be one streamlined thing here. You know, th- this is where the rally is going to be. There's tons of meetups now that have spawned from other content creators throughout that whole week. 
and it's all there. So all the events are listed as they come up. We um, pin them to the top in the announcements and there's tons of posts. So if you want to be engaged and a part of the community for equip specifically coming up in October, go to road to the, to the equip uh, road to equip. And then you'll, you'll be able to um, engage with everything and be a part of all that. So that's kind of where all of my info is for everything. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And we'll make sure that all that stuff is linked in the show notes as well. Thank Absolutely. you. Appreciate it. Awesome. No problem, man. And thank you everyone for listening to the Profit Roadmap today. And remember, you can listen to this show on all major streaming platforms, including Apple, YouTube, and Spotify, and much more. Uh, be sure to visit our show notes at serviceautopilot.com forward slash podcast to get this link to all the topics we discussed on today's show. And then lastly, if you have any questions, great recommendations, or if you want to be on the show yourself, email us at ProfitRoadmap at ExploreTechnologies.com. Explore is spelled X-P-L-O-R, by the way. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's show, please tell a friend. And yeah, thank you all, everybody. Just thanks for listening in. Yeah, Naylor, thanks for, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for giving yes. us your time. Thank you for having, uh, for having me. It was a good time. <laughs> Anytime, guys. All right, y'all yeah. take it easy.